I am about to do something incredibly stupid. I'll be honest, I've got absolutely no idea who this man is. But I also couldn't be bothered to film this bit again. In the summer of 2013, I graduated from university. To illustrate the significance of that moment on my own personal journey through life, here's footage of me looking wistfully at images of the day while well, sat on a train. Yeah. I had a haircut there once. A while ago, obviously. Here we are. My first job out of university was reading the travel news for BBC Radio Oxford. So I would get into work for six, spend four hours telling people that they weren't going to get to work on time, and then I'd be finished for the morning and I'd kick around for a bit and I'd go back and do the same again from 4 till 7pm. I'm probably making that sound like life was a lot more carefree than it actually was. I don't want to sound ungrateful because obviously it was an amazing opportunity for a 21 year old straight out of university. But that split shift was, I can confirm, a ball ache. And having to work a 13-hour day wasn't the only pain in the arse. At the time, I was still living in my student accommodation in, to give it its full name, Royal Leamington Spa, which is near the University of Warwick, which is where I was. And I didn't think that this would be a problem because Leamington is maybe like 45 minutes away from Oxford on the train, something like that. So it wasn't the ideal commute, but it wasn't really a disaster either. Um, but of course, I didn't realise until I got the job that I'd need to be in the office for 6am and the first train left Leamington at 5.37. To make matters worse, Oxford isn't exactly the cheapest place to live. And to be honest, the BBC weren't paying me that much money. So basically, I was stuck in this... <laughs> Do you know Dame on a fell? Yeah, and I'd like to know who pushed her. Sorry about that. Um, I was stuck in this weird situation where obviously I needed to go to work to earn money to live, um, but I couldn't move near work because it was too expensive. And I also couldn't get to work because there were no trains. Um, I mean, what do you do in that situation? Well, I can tell you, actually, I spent what remained of my student loan on a tent from Millets and spent three months living in a campsite. But then, a few months into my stay on the campsite, something terrible happened. I was going to go and see my mum and dad for the weekend, and so I packed down my tent to save a few quid on pitch fees, got the bus to the train station, got on the train, went to mum and dad's house. And it was while I was on the train, maybe, I don't know, 25 minutes out of Oxford, that I realised I'd accidentally left my tent, and in fact my home, on the bus. 
And when I rang the lost property office at Oxford Bosses or whatever they're called, there was no record of it anywhere. Somebody had stolen my house. I was left with no choice but to find an actual building to live in. Well, this is it. This here is the building where I spent one of the best years of my life. Obviously, I don't have that many to choose from, but this was my bedroom here. Kitchen was down there. Derry was in that room there. Still speak to him quite a bit. Um, and then above him, in that room there, lived Ian. So, let me set the scene for you. So essentially, on the 8th of September, I will be travelling to Australia. And the purpose of this visit is to locate and obtain the email address of Ian. Uh, what is my relationship with Ian? Well, Ian and I lived together in a house share in Oxford uh, back in 2013. We were quite good friends afterwards. I was invited to Ian's wedding. Uh, but unfortunately, in recent years, we have lost contact. And how did that happen? Well, first of all, Ian originally is from Australia, and he moved back to Australia. And when he did so, he changed his mobile number. And I didn't think to ask for the new mobile number, because I considered it more likely that we would communicate through internet-enabled means. But we primarily used Facebook until one day... I decided to delete my Facebook account because I wasn't really using it. And in doing so, I severed my only remaining means of communication with Ian. And so, without any contact details and no information whatsoever about Ian's whereabouts, I'm going to go to Australia to find him. Any questions? Almost immediately, it was obvious that my team of experts and Fabio, who'd just wandered in from the office, weren't 100% sold on the plan. Uh, is it just you that can't Google, or can none, none of us Google? I feel like just looking it up on the internet is cheating, so we'll probably avoid that. We're, 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 when you guys met in Oxford and you lived together, mm -hmm. was he staying there? Uh, no, he was a racing mechanic. I think Ian is a fairly uncommon name, though. How many Ians do you know? A lot of Ians in Australia. I don't know one Ian. Do you know what one is? I know a lot of Ians. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> name all the Ians you know. Go. <laughs> there was. Ian just, uh, uh... <laughs> You don't know any Ian's I don't know any Ian's! I don't genuinely know Ian's! I just don't remember. My guess is Melbourne. Okay. I think he's in Melbourne. What sort of percentage are we saying? 40. 40% Melbourne. Because of the... Because of what he does. Because of what he does. Because of... I'd say a large proportion, yeah, of... Uh, Australians that come to London when they go back, they move to Melbourne because the cultural aspect is very similar. It's and an art city. It's and what about the racing mechanical... Is in Melbourne. Is in yeah. Melbourne. Right? Oh. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming into the hospital. I hope that the next time we meet like this, I'll be able to tell you that I have found and obtained the email address of Ian Studley. And you'll have brought him back here. <gasps> Against his will. <laughs> <laughs> So, I've got two weeks to travel a country of 25 million people and make contact with one man called Ian. I mean, how hard can that be? Afternoon, Gary. I wasn't actually planning to come by Paris originally, but it was a lot cheaper than buying from the UK. I don't know why. I don't think I've ever 
looked forward to something, but also not looked forward to something as much as I have this. 22 hours is a long time to be sat down. the success of my Ian finding conference the week before, I decided to begin my two-week search of Australia in Melbourne. Here we are. Um, this is where I'm staying. I think this is where I'm staying. I'm not 100% sure. A few things have struck me, to be honest. Oh, Woolworths. Um, first of all, Melbourne is quite big. And I don't know whether my do a quick sweep of the city in two or three days idea is quite going to pass muster. It's a very large place. Um, the other thing is I told the taxi driver about my plan and he was very polite about it actually but in not so many words he said mate you're a fucking idiot. I've only been here about 20 minutes it's just beginning to dawn on me how stupid an idea this is. And here we go. We're in. I've left the key outside. There we go. Well, this is um, Bijou. Uh, what have we got? Kitchen area there. No. In the fridge, bathroom, well, shower room, no bath. Where's the bedroom? Has this flat not got a bed? Ah, oh, it's in here. Very nice. I'm sure I shall be perfectly happy here for the next five nights. However, I'd scarcely been in Australia for an hour and it was already obvious that five nights in Melbourne wasn't going to be long enough. You see that massive building there? If we assume that every single one of those windows, or every group of two or three, is an apartment, it would probably take me a whole week just to ask each individual person in that building if they are real. And I've not even got started on central equity next door. If I'm being honest, it wasn't a confident start. Well, it's been a very long day. Um, long couple of days, really. So, I'm going to try and get some sleep. And then tomorrow, the search is on. Ian, we're coming for you. Good night. Now, as we all know, Australia is famously upside down. And I really love how they've really embraced that fact in the design of the Australian fridge freezer. Because as we all know, in the UK, the fridge goes at the top. But here, freezer at the top, fridge at the bottom. Isn't that a lovely touch? I actually slept pretty well last night, I think. I woke up once for a couple of hours, actually. But then I went back to sleep and I woke up again this morning at about half nine. So I'm not saying I've completely conquered jet lag, but I feel like I'm doing pretty well. The investigation is on a firm footing, let's put it that way. What am I looking for? 
But while I was feeling a bit more cheery because of my sleeping situation, fate had conspired to make my impossible challenge even more difficult. On the plane, I learned that the Queen has died. I was actually talking to a couple of TV stations, radio stations, to see if we could get the investigation broadcast to the whole of Melbourne, maybe even the whole of Australia. The whole news agenda has been bumped to talk about the Queen. So my trump card here to get on the telly and start talking about it is kind of not on the table anymore. So, after this minor setback for me, and fairly major setback for the Queen, I headed out into a city of five million people to find Ian. OK, so, day one of 14. Um, I'm in Melbourne, and the... <laughs> I don't believe this. I've literally just left the front door. Uh, I'm just kidding, it's a dream. Pick up some t-shirts, please. Three. Nice one. Yeah, thank you so much. Do you know a man called Ian? I do. Do you? My dad's called Ian. Ah, okay. I'm probably not looking for your dad, but I can rule him out the investigation. Thank you so much. So many people are looking at my chest area. Um, not got any results yet, but it's looking very promising, I'd say. Excuse me folks, I'm so sorry to bother you. Do you know a man called Ian? Okay, no worries. Thanks anyway. <laughs> Do you know a man called Ian? No, no, no. Okay. Do you? My brother is named Ian. I don't think he's got a sister, <laughs> but thank you. You wouldn't happen to know a man called Ian, would you? No. Okay, no worries. No one here knows him. After a couple of hours of wandering around aimlessly, it became fairly obvious that I was going to need a better plan than asking all 25 million of Australia's residents individually. Not having it. So, here's what I came up with. When I was at university, I helped my mate Aaron Bowater with his Students' Union election campaign. Like so many of you, I like to spend my downtime and weekends participating in a wide variety of sports. My promise to you, as you're working for... Ow! Like any election candidate, we spent a lot of time handing out leaflets. But this approach quickly turned out to be incredibly inefficient. One volunteer would have to cover a large distance to hand out not very many leaflets to not very many people. And we decided there had to be a better tactic than spending a lot of time walking around. So one night we went to the university's largest halls of residence and set off the fire alarm. As the inhabitants evacuated, we were able to leaflet a large number of people in a very short space of time without having to move. Like with the election, to find Ian, I was going to need a volume opportunity. Also, I'm not going to be completely on my own here. I have called in some backup. I'm here with my friend Liv. Hi Liv. Uh, he's got a sore throat at the moment, so I'm not going to ask him to speak. But we are off to the, the AFL, which until about a day ago I didn't know existed. Who are we supporting? The Fremantle Dockers. I don't know if you can see that. And just to clarify, a lot of people support the other team. Yeah. Not this team, the other team. Yeah, the other team. A lot of people. Does that mean that we're going to get the shit kicked out of us on the... Right, good, OK. Going for that team is actually not the worst idea we've ever had because we'll be drawing a lot of attention to ourselves. I can then use that as a conversation starter. You're a c Thank you. Do you know a man called Ian? Etc. 
as you can see, I've changed into the high visibility version of the Help Have You Seen a Man Called Ian t-shirt. Um, just because the vast majority of people at the stadium today will be wearing black, so it's very important that I stand out to get the message across. Eventually, half-time came to give the Australian sat around us a break from shouting. And although I hadn't seen Ian on the big screen yet, I did have a bit of a plan. This feels like it's very unlikely to succeed, but let's give it a go. Hey, man. Um, I'm, I've got low expectations here, but I was wondering whether I could ask you something. Yeah, I'm trying to find my supervisor for you. That would be amazing, thank you. Yeah, we'll do, thank you. We're going to supervise a lab. Basically, it's, a, it's the longest of long shots, but I've come from the UK to try and find my friend Ian, who I've lost contact with. There's 95,000 people here or whatever. Can we just get a little announcement out on the PA to say, if Ian Studley is here, can you come to wherever a good meeting point is? You need to go to Stadium and Management Centre okay. in B1 in the Ponsford stand. Okay. And you need to put that request to them. Okay, I will and do. And they will answer you. So far, I'd spoken to a steward who'd sent me to his supervisor, who'd sent me to his supervisor. And none of them had said yes. But crucially, none of them had said no either. What a day. I. How to describe that? A mixed start, maybe? First of all, I'm absolutely knackered. Um, I've done, according to my Fitbit, 36,000 steps today, which is a lot. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit disappointed that I wasn't allowed to make an announcement on the tannoy to all of the people at the Aussie Rules game today. Was a really I did, yeah. I explained in full detail. I'm glad. And like six of the stewards I spoke to were very sympathetic, but the one at the end was having none of it. <laughs> and that just did for me, I think. Can't be helped. But positives a lot of people have shown an interest in my chest area, which has been great. And I've had some good conversations. And although we've not found Ian, I've spoken to a lot of people who have been able to kind of strike off the list. You know, people, if I see them again, I'll know that they don't know him, so I don't have to speak to them a second time. So that's been good. Um, and really importantly, I met a man in a pub today who could be the key to this entire investigation. Something potentially very significant could be coming down the track. But before I tell you about that, I am going to go to bed. Um, I'm very tired. But unfortunately, whatever that significant thing was, was going to have to wait. Because the next morning... I've had an absolute nightmare this morning. It's not even this morning, it's ten past one in the afternoon. Shit. Given that I'd only got two weeks to find Ian in the whole of Australia, giving myself the morning off wasn't exactly part of the plan. What are the odds that Australians don't call post-it notes post-it notes? Here, mate, have you got any stickos? I humbly apologise. I need a pen. It was also a Sunday, which was more bad news for me, because at two in the afternoon, a lot of the places I could be searching would soon be shut. But I was determined to use what remained of the day productively. 
OK, so there is a very handy bit of vacant wall in the flat. And so what I thought I'd do is convert this into some sort of police CSI investigation mood board thing, like off of the telly. So the first thing we can look at is false Ian's. Obviously, the T-shirts have not yet been a resounding success, but they have helped me to kind of identify a couple of Ian's who are not the Ian we're looking for. We have the T-shirt shop man's dad. Secondly, the lady from the alleyway's brother. I don't think Ian has a sister, so it cannot be him. We can rule these two people straight out of the investigation. Secondly, we've got people who have already been questioned. Obviously, I've already spoken to these people about Ian. I do not need to ask them again. Next up, interests, or in our case, Ian Trests. When we lived together, Ian and I spent the vast majority of our time together in the pub. I don't know if I can necessarily search every pub in Australia, but let's put it down for now. Ian is also a sports fan. Um, in particular, he supports Manchester United. But the big one is motor racing. When he lived in the UK, Ian worked as a mechanic for a racing team, and it is one of his big passions in life. Melbourne is home to the Australian Grand Prix, um, which I know is not taking place now, but if he is still involved in racing in some way, then, I mean, even if it's not here, maybe the people from, oh, hello. Cows? Maybe the Grand Prix people can kind of point me in the right direction. If we're being honest, my e-investigation wall wasn't about to get me a job on CSI New York. But finally, I did have one piece of good news to add. And I must add that this is still TBC, but I did speak to a man in a pub yesterday who works at an Australian radio station, and he said... I might be able to bring the Ian investigation live to air. So this feels like if we can get pretty much all of Melbourne who are listening to the radio in one go, it could potentially blow this thing wide open. It's half past six now, and obviously it's also a Sunday, so it's a bit late, and I don't know whether there are going to be heaps of people out and about, but I want to feel like I've done something today. So... I am going to head out and just see what I can find. I feel like this motor racing Grand Prix stuff is really worth doing a bit of digging around. It was a miserable evening in Melbourne, and not just because of the weather. That one's closed. I tried eight different sports bars that night and barely any of them were open. Something about armed robbers. The places that were open were very friendly, but they couldn't really tell me anything. Have you ever been to Albert Park? I think it's where they have the Formula One. Yeah, because you sort of go somewhere to turn out like what yeah. you're saying. Okay. And I was wondering if like there's a like a motor racing thing there or whether they just rock up and then Formula One, but that was on in March. Okay, so there's nothing else. There. Doesn't really feel like it's been a good day to be honest with you. I suppose positives are put the next part of the e-investigation on TikTok today. There have been loads of comments, um, people wanting to get involved, people tagging radio stations and TV stations and things like that. There's been loads of support um, and people are really getting behind the investigation, which is great. Um, I just don't really feel like I'm making any progress. heaps of time and I feel like 
one day out of 14 is a lot of time to have wasted. Well, you can't do anything about it, except go again tomorrow. It is so cold. In hindsight, I should have found someone to print a Have You Seen A Man Called Ian Jumper. It's fucking freezing. I would say that I'm this close to prosecuting the Australian Tourism Board for false advertising. Are you seriously trying to tell me that people are having barbecues in their swimwear in this weather? Hello there. Um, I'm a visitor to Melbourne, and I have maybe a slightly unusual request. So it's Albert Park, and it's colder. Do the main the rest. Okay. Oh, here we go. I don't know what I'm expecting to find here. I suppose the dream scenario would be that there's some sort of Melbourne Grand Prix office. I mean, the dream, dream scenario would be, oh yeah, Ian, he works for, etc., etc. And then they can just put me in touch. But that feels unlikely. Well, I can't see a Formula One circuit yet, but this is really nice. Wow. I feel like I'm actually walking in the wrong direction, but the park is just so nice. It would be a shame not to kind of take it all in, you know? Do we think this is it? To be honest, I don't think I'd know a Grand Prix circuit if it slapped me around the face. If this place doesn't have a gift shop, I'm going to be absolutely raging. No. As you can tell from this highly emotive music I'm playing, my hopes of finding a kindly old lady in a visitor centre were misplaced. This place has kind of got the feel of a pit lane or something like that, doesn't it? Like, surely, that's where the car goes. Well, this is obviously it, but it's just completely dead. Yeah, look. My big hope of bumping into an Australian motorsport expert while browsing the novelty pencil sharpeners had fallen flat. I could always try and set the alarm off. No. Probably not the best idea. The Formula One Australian Grand Prix is being held on the lands of the Bunurong people and the Australian Grand Prix Corporation wish to acknowledge them as traditional owners and custodians. That's interesting. Um, there's a couple of things going on here. I believe, and I'm not an expert on this obviously because I've only been here for three days, but I think we saw this at the AFL the other day. It's all kind of based around an acknowledgement that the people who are living here now were not the original landowners and it's a kind of recognition of the fact that these lands belong to somebody else. I want to start off by acknowledging that this evening we are meeting on the lands of my ancestors, the Wurundjeri people, and I'd like to take this opportunity to pay my respects to my oldest boat past, present and emerging, and why your Wurundjeri country, you're most welcome to the traditional lands and the waterways of the Wurundjeri people. So we'll be check and welcome, enjoy the game. But there was somebody with the authority to talk about the original, the traditional landowners um, and they basically welcomed everyone to the land before the start of the game and you see it quite a lot around Australia lots of companies 
clubs, buildings, all kind of recognising the fact that although they're situated there now, it's not actually their land, it traditionally belonged to somebody else. But it's also helpful because it's given me the name of the company that organises the Melbourne Grand Prix, which is the Australian Grand Prix Corporation Limited. And presumably they must have an office or a phone number or something like that. A quick call to directory enquiries later and I was on my way. Right, I've got an address and they are literally 10 minutes away. Which, well, they're actually 11 minutes away, so it's not literally 10 minutes away. But nearby. This must be it. There's a big car in the office. I've kind of just wandered in off the street here. Um, I hope that's allowed. I'm actually going to stop filming for a bit because I've just walked in here and I don't want to give them any reason to chuck me out. I'm being seen too. Someone from Motorsport is coming. Great, that's amazing. Thank you so much for your help. They sound like they're the right people to talk to, don't they? I think this is good news. They didn't have anyone who could help but the very nice office manager, I think her name was Vanessa, put me in touch with Motorsport Australia. And if Motorsport Australia can't help us find him, then to be honest, I don't really know who can. Laughing <laughs> <laughs> on the station is called Birdly. Apparently this is it. Again, I'm going to have to be slightly careful with the old camera here. As much as I'd like you to be in the meeting with me, uh, my main priority is getting information about Ian. If I can kind of sneak a phone on in the background, or even get their permission, um, then I will. But we just need to be diplomatic here. See you in a bit. We have struck literal gold. This is unbelievable. Um, wow. This weekend in Melbourne, they are having, I don't know what it is, a race meeting of some description. And literally everyone from Australian motorsport is going to be there. Everyone from Sydney, Brisbane, wherever else there is in Australia. If they are part of a racing team, they are coming to Melbourne on Friday. He worked in motor racing before he came to the UK. He worked in motor racing when he was in the UK. This has to be it, doesn't it? Just realized I've been sat here for about half an hour and I haven't seen a train yet. And the next day, the good news just kept on coming. Oh shit. A uh, guy called Tom has flown out to Australia for two weeks to try and find his old Australian friend, Ian, who he used to live with in a house share in the UK back in 2013. When this idea came to me originally, I didn't quite comprehend quite how vast Australia is. Yeah. It's a large it's, country, it's, isn't it? It's, it's huge, honestly. <laughs> what a mad 24 hours. It's weird how on Sunday the whole thing seemed to be collapsing about my ears, but now I mean, we're off and running, aren't we? A man messaged me the other day and said, would it be helpful if I shouted Ian out of my bedroom window? Obviously, yes. Although I'm getting quite jubilant about everything, We've not actually found him yet. And there are all manner of reasons why he might not be at the racing this weekend. He might have changed career, 
He might not even be in the country anymore, don't know. So there's no guarantee that he's gonna be there. The other thing is that this racing event is actually giving me quite a few administrative problems because I was supposed to be flying to Sydney on Thursday and that obviously is now not gonna happen with the racing being in Melbourne on Friday. And I need to see if I can extend the Airbnb and if I can't do that, then I'm gonna need to find somewhere else to stay. And also, it just cuts down the amount of time I'm spending in places other than Melbourne. I'll have spent more than a week looking for him here. And if he's somewhere else... I don't want to get to Poirot on you here, but have you tried Googling him or, alternatively, using a friend's Facebook page just to type his name in and find him that way? Well, I must admit, that thought has crossed my mind. <laughs> but isn't that also what Mark Zuckerberg would want? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. Wow. I've never done TV before. Well, that's not entirely true. Um, I was on TV once when I worked at BBC Radio Oxford. I was reading the travel news, and for some reason, it was a difficult day for travel. What was it? Was it snow? No, I'll tell you what, it was floods. Weird time to be in BBC local radio when there's flooding. Because obviously these journalists are desperate for a story. Somebody had been phoned up to say that an old lady had been flooded out of her house in Kidlington. It was like a carnival atmosphere in there. People were celebrating, get the radio car down there, get her on the phone. Anyway, cos travel was severely disrupted, they sent a journalist with a TV camera down to the travel centre where I was reading the travel news. And when they got there, I think they realised it was just a bit dull. So they filmed some bits and left. I think they must have felt a bit bad because they told me that I was going to be on the TV and then it was all rubbish. I mean, I wasn't bothered. But what actually happened is halfway through the report, there was just like a gratuitous shot of my back while I was reading the travel news and then that was it. So all of that is a very long way of saying, I don't think that appearance counts. And we can say this is my first ever televisual exposure. And there's going to be more tomorrow. Welcome back. You're going to want to sit down for this one because some friends might say, I'd travel to the ends of the earth for you. But our next guest is literally doing just that. What makes Ian so attractive that you need to find him again? Or is there some financial... Does he still owe you a, you know, a fiver? <laughs> it's his shout. <laughs> no, to be honest, I think I probably owe him quite a few drinks. Um, Ian was a very good friend of mine. Um, to cut a long story short... I graduated from university and got a very low paying job in a very expensive place to live. Um, so I was living in a tent for about three months and then the tent got stolen, so I had to find a house. Um, and I was thrown into this house share and Ian was probably my closest friend in the house. Um, and was actually, you know, on a serious note, was probably there for me through a pretty difficult period of my life. So wow. worth keeping in touch with, I think. I'm just taking a bit of time, um, as indeed I do every evening, to go through people's TikTok comments and Instagram messages and that sort of thing and see what fresh intelligence is coming into the investigation. This is so hard. There are so many Ians in Australia. In the UK, every year there's a survey published that says the name Ian is dying out because not enough babies are being called it. And there are loads of them in Australia. As the night wore on, I spent over an hour combing through people's messages. Most of them were from people saying they were enjoying the videos, and some of them were from people telling me I was an idiot. But despite my various radio and television appearances, there was still no sign of my old housemate. But then... This is... exceptionally promising. Shit. This is very, very major. This is, I think basically this could be it. Surely we've got him, surely. I've been sat here for the last 
23 minutes. Um, just thinking about the enormity of today. I'm not nervous, but there's definitely a, there's something going on. Do you know what I mean? Please allow me to introduce you to someone that I think should be famous but isn't. It's a dear friend of ours and a former colleague from Radio 1. Meow, colleague. A man called Tom Davis. He's got himself into a bit of a sticky situation. He's trying to find his friend called Ian. It's an accidental worldwide game of hide and seek where the person who is hiding doesn't know they're playing the game. My journey that morning had given me a sense of just how enormous Melbourne actually is. I'd been sat on the train for nearly an hour and I still wasn't anywhere near my eventual destination. To be honest, I was beginning to see why the t-shirts hadn't worked and why everyone had said I was a complete idiot for trying to find him. It took me a 50 minute train journey and a 20 minute bus journey and then a 10 minute walk to get here and it's just still going. You know in Wallace and Gromit where they're on the train and Gromit is having to put track down in front so they don't run off? It's like that except as the train moves along somebody is very quickly putting up buildings so you never get to the edge of the city. It's ridiculous. So, the other day, when I was getting all excited, I'd just received a DM on TikTok from a man called Vern. And Vern is a valued member of the Australian motorsport community. And he doesn't know Ian, but he knows of Ian. And Vern was able to give me his last known place of work. And even if he doesn't still work there, you know, I mean, we've just had a pandemic and everybody upping sticks and changing jobs and all the rest of it. Surely they will know where he went. Surely there will be people here who are still friends with him. So whether he's here or whether he's moved on or whatever, we're at the very least going to be one degree of separation away from Ian. OK. This should be it. Um, don't even know what to say anymore. Um, yeah, this is... This is the place. How am I even going to film this? I don't... Do you want to see me or do you want to see him? That's number 11. That's number 9. This must be it. But yeah, here we go. I was absolutely shitting myself. This was where Ian worked. Excuse me, mate. Does yeah. a guy called Ian Studley work here? He does, yeah. Is he here? No, he's not here. He's at our As I made the long trip back to the Airbnb, which was so far away it might as well have been in Kuala Lumpur, I was an absolute mess. I don't know what to say. Despite all the warnings and all the caveats, I was just so certain that was the day we'd find Ian. What a day. Looking back on it, it was actually very successful. We confirmed unequivocally where Ian works and also exactly where he will be tomorrow and that I'll be able to get access to him at uh, access to him. You know what I mean. <laughs> I'll be able to be in the same area as him tomorrow at the motor racing jamboree or whatever it is. So basically, we've done it. Like, that's it. Ian has been found. All I have to do is, you know... Do it. But also, um, I'm still really annoyed. Um, I think internally I'd built it up. I thought that was the moment. And then 
obviously it wasn't. In six days, we've found Ian in a country of 25 million people. Surely nothing can go wrong now. For some reason, whenever I go on holiday, I never think, I wonder if there's a danger I could come back with more stuff than I left with. God, um, you know what, I'm just going to have to wear both of these. There is a slight element of jeopardy today, um, because I'm actually getting chucked out of the Airbnb. I was able to extend it for one night, but they couldn't do a second, because I've got somebody else coming in. Um, so I'm all packed. Um, obviously I'm wearing two hats, because when I left for Australia I had one. Um, I've now picked up a second and I can't fit it in the suitcase. I'm making a very dangerous assumption here that if we find Ian, he's going to have somewhere for me to stay. Um, otherwise, I don't know, I might potentially be homeless. Right, I've moved out of the Airbnb, just done another radio show, and this now Presumably, is it? I've already seen one person in motor racing attire. So that's good news. I think I'm even more nervous than yesterday, which is weird, because I spoke to his colleagues yesterday and they said he would definitely be here. Like, unequivocally, we are going to find him today. But it's just, I don't know, weird feeling to describe. It's been a mad last how many days. It's been eight days, I think. never done anything like this in my whole life. And this is what it's all been leading up to, like, whatever happens in however long it takes me to find him. Shit. Hello, mate. I'm looking for the team from Gary Rogers Motorsport. Do you know where I'd find them? Literally any minute now. GRM. That's his team. This is it. Is Ian Studley here? No, I'm not near, sorry. Do you know where he'd be? Uh, I'm not sure. So okay. Say so again? <laughs> Thank you, man. Um, I don't know where he is. You don't know where he is? No. He's, I'm keeping his ear somewhere, but I'm just wandering aimlessly at the minute. Just there? Yeah. Oh, shit. Thank you. 24. This is, this is literally it. He's in here. But he wasn't. He was outside. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, mate? Good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. You brought me. Fucking hell, that was hard work. Um, yeah, I'm really sorry for putting all your personal details on national television. Yeah, it might be time for a, a haircut to do my job. <laughs> You've got a call from Roger, like an hour before it went on air, basically. Yeah, I know what the message is. Do you know your mate's going to be Oh, okay. That was the first inkling I had. Thank you. No, to be fair to them, like, we can say they killed the surprise, but it was then on national television like, an hour later. Yeah, they did not look pretty soon. Okay, well, you can officially stop messaging Ian. We found him. Oh, man. Done it. Thank you, man.
<laughs> well, I've been meaning to ask you about this. I hope this hasn't spoiled our friendship because my Airbnb ran out today, so I'm technically homeless. Oh, well, there's, there's plenty of pets around here, so... <laughs> Thank the Lord he was joking. Hang on, let me get this warthog. <laughs> Look what I've got in my room. FYI, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go and see your chickens. So which one's Elizabeth? Elizabeth's on the right. Hello, Elizabeth. And then Anne's Anne. on the left. Hey, Anne. What I really love about this house is you can just keep going round and round in circles. Like, I'm still going. And, and then um, something with pepperoni on would be great. And then I'm in the same place again. Is, hello, isn't this amazing? Um, there are some questions that the people of the internet will want to know the answers to. First of all, did you want to be found? didn't seem like I had a choice. <laughs> no, no, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. Um, you found out through... You weren't watching the TV. You got a message from the TV. Yeah. And what were they saying? Uh, do you know that your friend's looking for you? <laughs> right. Because we're going to do a special on him in about an hour's time. <laughs> so you were given 60 minutes notice yeah. that this was coming? Yeah, which wasn't enough time to find my passport and, <laughs> and organise a flight. And did you watch the thing go out? I did see it, yeah. What did you make of it? Um, it was... It was a little bit <clears throat> weird seeing myself and old old friends on TV. Yeah, I felt it the same. Yeah. It was bizarre, but... Apparently we're news, so. <laughs> Um, and the final question, just to kind of wrap up this entire investigation, because obviously the objective was to find you, but it was specifically to find you and ask you for your email address. So for the benefit of future communications between ourselves, please can I have your email address? Oh, I've forgotten it. <laughs> Over the next seven days, I spent an amazing week on the outskirts of Melbourne, catching up with old friends, doing traditional Australian activities, and being woken up by Ian's chickens. Go away. As well as the builders he'd brought in at 8am to renovate his kitchen. I'm currently stood. Mia Vitas from Al Kangaroo. Look at the size of that! Wow, what a sausage! <laughs> We've just come out for a barbecue to a place called Arthur's Seat. Don't know if you know it. Um, it's the most amazing place. There's, you can't really see it, but just behind there is a really spectacular view. Um, there's some of the local wildlife, a few cockatoos. I've seen some kangaroos today, that was exciting. I feel like I've properly done Australia now. Um, yeah, I've got a pack tomorrow, and then I'm heading home from what has been just the most it's been the most amazing week to be honest. I've said this before on Instagram and TikTok and wherever else, but it's very easily been the best week of my life. The whole thing has just been phenomenal. If you've not been to Australia and you get the opportunity, I would thoroughly recommend it. I think with it being the last day, or not quite the last day, but more or less, and being in this amazingly kind of verdant and tranquil and incredibly beautiful place has actually given me a bit of pause for thought. Um, I think in amongst all the fun and the stupidity and all the rest of it, 
I think there is a message here, isn't there? It's easy to say this now, having found it, but it was incredibly hard work. Um, and it took a lot of perseverance and dedication, not just from me, but there have been dozens of people here in Australia, back in the UK, who have been helping out, and they've been amazing. Um, a lot of patience at times. Um, and also, I suppose, in a way, it was a test of our friendship, because there were plenty of occasions when, honestly, I could have just given up. Um, and I could have gone back to the UK without having found him because this is one of the most if not the most difficult thing that I've ever done um, and I suppose just kind of being here now and thinking about all of that I suppose the lesson is this guys just give Facebook your data honestly it's not worth the faff Has anyone seen an Australian man called Ian? It's worth a go.